There's a particular type of drumming that has gotten super popular and super common since I would say the mid to late 90s. And it has since garnered the attention and admiration of many a young and impressionable drummer. We all know it. Half of us love it. There's a whole bunch of notable drummers that have really helped to popularize this type of thing. Tons of instructional videos on YouTube on this um, style of drumming, including a few of my own. So, I mean, I'm not trying to come off as some kind of hypocrite as this video progresses. But yeah, a lot of young drummers have been flocking to this particular style and becoming more and more fascinated and intrigued by this type of uh, playing and then they all want to learn how to do it. And then a lot of older drummers started to get a little bit annoyed and a little bit kind of tired of seeing it. And I mean, you, you know, you can call them what you want, haters, OGs, whatever. But um, the fact of the matter is, you know, video after video after video of drummers between 12 years old and, you know, 24, have just completely flooded YouTube, Facebook, and IG of cats just pummeling their kits at 100 miles an hour. So this particular style of drumming, which of course we all know by now as, let's just say G-chops, um, although that particular style is fairly new considering, um, the, the concept or the foundation underneath it it's not new at all. It's been around for years. G-Chops is based off of a concept called linear drumming. And if you've never heard of the term linear drumming before, or if you have heard it before and don't know what it is, the concept is very simple. It's just a string of notes played in a straight line. The reason why G-Chops is so exciting is because it's very fast, it's very loud, it's very technical and exciting to watch. It's kind of like the drumming equivalent of a fireworks display. I think the reason why so many young drummers kind of flock to it is because of all of that, number one. Number two, broken down to its core, um, it's fairly easy to do. Like with a few dedicated months of practice, you can do all that stuff if you know exactly what it is. But like I said, it's, it's real, like as crazy as it looks, it's really not that hard. That's why you see a lot of, you know, 12 and 13 year olds wilding out on the kits. So it's a very sort of flashy and fancy and physical way to play the drums. At the same time though, it's kind of the least musical. And the reason why a lot of older drummers kind of turn their faces at it is because um, it's since become a bit of a sport. You know what I'm saying? Like a bunch of cats just kind of muscling out 30 second notes and triplets as fast as they can at the highest volume. So, I mean, the musicality for a lot of these older drummers that have been listening to a lot of the previous older drummers failed to hear any type of music happening when they listen to that stuff. And it gets old like super quick. And to be honest, man, on that argument, they kind of have a point. Once you've worked up the sort of physical stamina enough to be able to get around your drums that quickly, then you're kind of doing it. It's actually a lot harder to play less notes and make more of a musical statement. So if you take one of those crazy solos and you strip away all of this. You strip away all the notes and break it down to its foundation. You just get a subdivision. You just get that. Right? When you start adding color to just that one subdivision, then you get all of this. You get the fireworks and, and all that kind of stuff. So for that particular reason, the whole G-Chops thing all sounds the same to a lot of drummers. So all of that brings us to the point of this video 
which is really intended to sort of hopefully steer you away from what I call the linear trap. Now, let me just make a case for the other side now. Um, because I'm not saying that there's no value at all to that um, particular type of plan. There are indeed super valuable benefits to knowing how to do that stuff. And it's not so that you can get up on stage and, you know, pull your pants down. So I'm not saying don't learn it. What I'm trying to get at is don't sort of build your drumming style off of that foundation. Don't spend so much time working on that until you've mastered it and then that's all you can do. Because effectively what you're going to end up doing is just kind of pigeonholing yourself into that one sort of super boisterous style and it's going to make you useless in a lot of other situations. Learn that stuff so you can make it more of an extension of your vocabulary. So that when you need to pull it out, you can pull it out. But when you make that your main focus, when you spend so much time working on the chops thing and working up your speed so you can play super fast and super loud and do all that kind of stuff, you're going to fall into that trap. You're going to start to play everything that way. And you're going to end up turning off a lot of musicians. So let me flip this around, man. Let's talk about the amazing benefits that there are to learning how to play this way on the drums. Learning this particular way to play is going to do amazing things for your fluidity, your dynamics, your control, your overall facility around the drums, and it's going to do wicked things for developing your hands. That stuff is great for, you know, five minute drills, 10 minute drills, um, exercises, all of that kind of stuff. That's probably why it's, it really doesn't kind of impress me much because when I hear it, it just sounds like they're practicing. It's also a fantastic way to just warm up on the kit, right? Because everything's getting loose and your hands are getting loose and you know, you're getting comfortable with your setup. So there are definite benefits to learning how to do that stuff. Now, if you really want to get deep into the, the massive creative world of linear playing, I suggest you look up a guy named Gary Chafee. Just type in Gary Chafee linear concepts on YouTube and then just sit back and watch what that dude, he's like the Yoda guru of linear drumming. This stuff is hard. Like he really gets in there. When he starts digging into, you know, groups of threes and fives and sevens and all that kind of stuff and then he shows you how to take that kind of thing and shape them into some really cool musical ideas, that's when you start getting creative with, um, with linear drumming. Yeah, I mean, whether it means anything to you or not, but, you know, Gary's two most notable students are Vinnie Coliuta and Steve Smith. And we know what those guys can do. So, yeah, man, I just wanted to encourage you guys, especially you young drummers, and just sort of steer you a little bit away before you get too deep into that whole um, G-Chops thing. Dig into it if you want, but just not too deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't base your whole style of drumming on that type of thing. There are much, much cooler ways to use linear drumming to your advantage. So, jump in this conversation, man. Drop a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on the whole G-Chops thing, the whole, you know, linear drumming thing. We don't want to slam anybody. We don't want to talk down. 
to anybody who think the young drummers can get along with the old heads. We're all part of the same family, man. We're all just here trying to get better. So thanks for watching this video. New viewers, new subscribers, welcome to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out. Don't forget to visit the merch shop. We got t-shirts, hoodies, and mugs now. And everything's on sale. I got a Christmas sale going on. It's 15% off all orders until Boxing Day at midnight. Just use the discount code Xmas Groove or Christmas Groove. Um, just type that in that little box at checkout and you get 15% off your order. That's it, man. I'm out. Share this video if you dig it. Like, subscribe. See you next video.